Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today I am doing a paint along. It is part three, exploring water mixable oil paints. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Artprof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I would love it for you guys to draw or paint along with me. Doesn't matter if you're starting a new piece or if you're continuing the same piece that you started in the previous stream, <coughs> please post what you create in the Art Prof Discord in the Art Alongs channel. I love seeing what you guys create. And if you would like to reference the reference photo, which is in the lower left-hand corner, that link is in the YouTube video description below. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to Windsor and Newton for providing the supplies that we are going to be using today. So thank you so much for your support and providing us what we need to do these tutorials. Now, if you missed it, I did start this painting with some thumbnail sketches. So this is the thumbnail sketch that I ended up choosing. And you can see this is the composition. You'll notice in the reference photo that it's not the same composition. I took a piece of that because it's a reference. You guys don't need to copy it verbatim. That's what's more fun. Now, we're getting to the end of this painting process and a couple things are going to happen. For one thing, you guys will notice my painting pace is going to be much slower and there's going to be way more time stepping back and looking at the piece. In fact, it's probably gonna be 40% me just squinting and looking and only 60% painting. So yes, I know that's not as exciting to watch, but you have to do that. You have to continually look it becomes much more about looking and a lot less about painting. All right, let me take a look. I'm gonna just do a really brief self-critique because I do think that's important. And you'll also notice today that I'm gonna get further and further away from the reference photo. And on top of that, I am also going to look at the reference photo less because in the beginning part of the process, you really are glued, well, at least I am, to the reference photo. And now I'm seeing I don't need to do that so much. Okay, let's take a glance. And I think what I really need to do is beef up the blacks because I was holding off on that before. And now I'm really ready to go in and do that. So let's get started with some thick paint. I am not going to use the safflower oil, which I used a lot in the beginning because I wanted to do lots of transparent glazes, but I actually think right now I don't need that. Oh, and by the way, this is the squeeze bottle that I put my safflower oil in. And I really like this because now you don't have to dip your brush into the safflower oil, therefore making the safflower oil dirtier every time you do that. So this is nice because you just dip it onto your palette and it's a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna start, I don't know, maybe I should start with a big brush. I don't really want to, but maybe I need it. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna start with this Filbert, Filbert, that's what I meant to say. And let's just get in here and block in some darks because like I said, I was really holding back on that before. So yeah, th there's not gonna be any fireworks <laughs> today. <laughs> I always feel that the ending is where things just get not that entertaining. <laughs> the beginning part is where things really are moving along. You don't really do that towards the end of the painting with just so much of it is stepping back. now. I'm not putting any safflower oil, so this is pretty thick paint, but I do want the paint to be thin. So what I like to do is just work out 
some of the paint. So now there's very little paint, but it's thick. No soft flower oil right now because I want to really have control over this. And at least for me, when I paint, you know, I'm going to hold it like this. So I have a little bit less a tendency to pick. I do think the more medium, whatever it is that you're using, the tougher it is to control your paint. So when I really want to be a control freak, that's when I just really cut back on the quantity of safflower oil or whatever medium you guys are using. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys were asking me earlier to do water mixable oils and we're gonna keep doing some. We have more scheduled for next month. It's gonna take a while before I really get to know these because I'm still really troubleshooting a lot of the process right now. By the way, I will be looking at the chat. It's just that I can't do it while I'm painting. So if you guys have questions, things that you wanna ask me, just put them in the chat and I'll get to them later because I will scroll up and see what people are talking about. So even if I don't reply immediately, it doesn't mean that I won't eventually. So just stick that in there. Although, <clears throat> I mean, this is a good thing, I suppose. We have so many people watching these, which is phenomenal. I'm like, oh my God, people wanna hear me talk. Actually, <laughs> you know, my, <laughs> my 11 year old, I think I was telling her that yes, people hire me to, talk to them about their work. And I give lectures in different places. And she said, why would anybody want to pay to talk to you? I have to listen to you all the time. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> she was baffled by this. Why would anybody pay money to listen? She was so confused. I was like, thanks. <laughs> Kids keep you humble. Those of you guys who have kids probably know what I'm talking about. Now, another thing I like about the dry brushing, having thick paint with no oil, that's very thin, is I can get texture. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about there. In fact, I need my rag. Rag's your best friend. If you guys don't paint with a rag, oh, you're missing out so bad. So one thing I'll sometimes do is I'll put down too much paint. Like this is way more than I want. But the advantage of this, if I put this on top, see, this is way too much. That's more than I want. You can actually go in later on with the rag and you can pull it off. So this way you can see you have the glaze, but it's not oil meeting like flowing all over the place. Like I, I really want to be a control freak today. You know, this is too small. I think I'm going to switch. I really wish I had a big filbert. Like I don't like these square brushes. This is my personal preference. I know some people really like them. So when I give you guys advice like that, just take it with a grain of salt because just because it works for, doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean it won't work for you. It's just my personal thing. Everybody has a totally different way of painting. So you guys can see now I'm reaping the rewards because the oranges, they're too light right now. And now I'm just adding because this is an additive process at this point. It's all dry. None of this is wet. Last time I had a couple spots that were a little bit tacky, but not today. It's all dry. So for that reason, if this was too dark, you can't get rid of it. And that's a limitation of this particular technique. That, that is not necessarily me, but it is something you have to think about. So like over here, I'm darkening it up quite a bit. So this is what I said in the last session about setting things up for the next layer, because I knew in advance this is what I was going to do. This is not an accident. And I think with painting, you do have to think that way. You do have to ask yourself, <clears throat> why are you doing this right now? And how might you benefit later on from that process? Okay, let me take a look and see what's going on in the chat. Parizad, sorry, I'm sure I didn't say that right. What is your favorite thing about oils over acrylics? 
this is really vague, but it's true. I, I like the way it feels. <laughs> I know that's really not so easy to understand, but just the way it feels in the brush <clears throat> and the way it flows across the canvas, acrylic just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't have, I feel that acrylic, it's just a little bit slippery. And I like that oil has more body to it and a little bit more bite. Sometimes I feel like with acrylic, it's hard to get a nice, substantial dry brushing experience. I am the biggest fan of dry brushing, especially I realized when I did that Utah tutorial, how much I just love dry brushing with watercolor. I mean, it saved me. Like I was trying to puddle everything with tons of water and it didn't work at all, but I do know for oil painting, I really, really rely on that. And you just can't do that with acrylics. So it's tricky. So Itanely says, is your painting dry now or is it still tacky? I think it's all dry. Yeah. Yeah, even this, which is pretty thick. Yeah, it's bone dry right now. So it's not tacky at all. George is asking, how are you liking these paints? What do you think is the biggest difference between these and regular oils? Again, it's in the feel of the paint. These do feel... I'm trying to think about how to describe that. I think it's in the bite. They don't have the ability, I feel, to have that like harsh mark that's very substantial and thick. And these just feel, they feel a little bit more buttery, if that makes any sense. A little bit more slippery. And I know I had a couple people who commented later, they said, oh, well, maybe the reason why it feels so slippery is because you're painting on a panel, which is super smooth compared to canvas. But I don't think that's it because I've painted on panels tons of times with oils. It just doesn't feel the same way. Yeah, it's it's not really like oils. I, I have a hard time with people saying that it's oils. I almost wish in some ways that they would just give it another name instead of water mixable oils. I know that's technically what they are, but I feel like it's a little bit misleading because I don't really feel like these are like oils. They're, they're like a whole other universe of painting. And I think if you're an oil painter, you've painted a lot with oils and you're expecting these to be like oils, they're not. They're, they're really different. But again, it depends on the person. Some people may not feel the difference. Some people may feel it's a minor difference. I do think it's huge that I'm painting indoors and not worrying about solvents. That's amazing. And it definitely does not feel like acrylics. So it's really, really interesting. I love this comment from Carrie Ann. We're here to learn while being entertained with your love of life. It's all I need. Oh, good. <laughs> Cause I always worry when I do these live streams, I'm like, oh, it's not entertaining enough. <laughs> I'm not keeping people's attention, but you guys are, are so great about being patient about that. And Karen says, it is good to see just how much stepping back is needed. There's oil paint, so we're not watching paint dry. Sunk is saying, why did you choose safflower oil instead of linseed or walnut? I'm sorry for the boring answer, but Windsor Newton sent this to me and <laughs> they were gonna send me everything. But I guess because of the pandemic, they have a lot of items that are out of stock. And I hate spending money on art supplies when I don't have to. So I just thought, okay, let's just get to know the safflower oil. And I do have other mediums here with me. I don't think they're on my desk right now, but I will get to those. I just feel like with a new medium, I don't want to put in too many factors because then I can't isolate, okay, what is the safflower oil really good at? What are the problems with it? If I start mixing all these other mediums and it's really confusing for me. Yeah, like for example, Dara is saying that version of the square brush, which is the one right here, is my favorite kind. I know, and my favorite kind is the filbert, which is this longer one with a rounded top. That's cool, whatever works best for you guys. And Dara's asking, can you re-wet them like watercolors? I don't think so, you know what, let's try it. I really doubt it. <clears throat> Let's see, maybe this one area. 
Yeah, that's not happening. Let me try a little bit of safflower oil. I don't think that's going to work though. Let's see. Nah, <laughs> totally bone dry. So it's not like gouache or watercolor where you can rehydrate things. And Karen is asking, do you use Winsor & Newton with your regular oils? I do. And that is not because they're giving me supplies, although they have in the past. I used Winsor & Newton for years before they gave us supplies. But I really like their oils because they're not astronomically expensive. And I am able to buy the professional artist version, not the student brand, which is called Winton. And it's a big difference. I think if you can afford it, get the professional grade because there's a large difference between the two. There's other brands like there's Old Holland, which is so expensive. I mean, I think they have some tubes with Old Holland that are $50 for like a little tiny tube. I just can't do that. I mean, I definitely have had professors who are like, I only paid with Old Holland. I'm like, great, I'd rather spend $50 on something I can eat, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. The other thing that I want to do today, I want to be more deliberate with my brushwork. So each brushstroke packs a bigger punch. In the beginning, it's, oh, see, I don't like this. I'm sort of, everybody see how I'm like scrubbing this? I don't like that. That's, that's a little bit picky in a way I don't want it to be. And I guess this is something I'm always working on which is really trying to be less picky about my brushwork. Cause I, I'm like that anyway, I'm sort of a tight painter and I wish I was not, I wish I could be more loose. Part of this is that I'm not warmed up yet. I have not been painting at all since these streams, but I think that, that that's just my life goal in terms of painting. I just always, always, want to be looser because I'm just not good at it. <laughs> That's the thing is if you guys study with us here at Art Prof, we definitely have some videos where it's like a master of a certain craft. Song Kang is one of those people. Alex Rowe is one of those people. They're just, in my opinion, the one of the best in the field that you can work with. <clears throat> but then you get me <clears throat> teaching you oils and I'm not really the master of oils. I'm pretty good, but I'm not a painter painter. Some people really are. I, I really think painting is something that you're really born with in a way. Some people are painters. They really are. Like we did this critique of this MFA student Jonathan McGregor, you guys can go back and look for it. We did that very recently. I think that was about a week ago or something. But um, he was a painter for sure and had beautiful paintings. And I'm looking at his paintings. I'm like, I could not paint like this. I don't have those painterly strokes. I pick too much. I mean, I just <laughs> I don't have that in me. See, this is what I don't like about my technique. Does everybody see how I just did that? I did two strokes and I'm like, oh, if I was Kathy Speranza, I would have put down one. That is what bothers me. And then I go and I pick at it like I'm doing right now. And I don't like that. I guess part of it is just fundamentally, I have a certain look that I just love, but I, it's like, I can't do it. But I suspect a lot of it is just, I don't paint very much. And painting, you, you got a lot of the hours, you guys, with painting in a way that I think other media, you can kind of get away without it. It depends. Jordan McCracken Foster, he's always talking about, quote, pencil mileage. And I think that is a really great term because I, I do think that a lot of painting and a lot of techniques are like that. It's about just getting hours in. I know that sounds really boring, but you know what, not, not all of life can be a Michael Fassbender movie. <laughs> Although <laughs> I watched this terrible movie he was in, The Light Between the Oceans. I don't recommend it. It's such a stupid movie. It's so sappy. But I was watching it thinking, mm, I'm really glad I didn't steal a baby and pose it as my own and get in trouble later. Yeah, that's, 
I don't need my life to be like that. <laughs> okay. I think I need to jump around. I'm spending a little bit too much time on the oranges. Although I got to pace myself. I can't rush. I think with painting, I always want to paint faster. But then I'm like, you know, Clara, you don't get results when you do that. That's a bad, bad idea. So let's just take it real slow and see what happens and really build this up. See, here's another thing that is different from oils. And that's that typically speaking, if this were an oil painting with real oils, I would go in with some oil medium and I would put it all over and rub it into the painting with a rag because, you know, sometimes you look at an oil painting and the sheen is not even like there's some parts that are shiny and some parts that are matte. And so I do that so that I can bring back the luster of the paints, but I didn't have to do that today. It doesn't really have that issue. So I was like, okay, I guess I don't need to do that. I mean, it's not like bad that you have to do that. I, I don't mind. That's fine. Oh, this is picky, picky, not good. Uh, I think my issue, I just sort of have like inferiority complex with my painting skills that I don't have in other media. Even when I'm doing printmaking, like I don't think I'm the best printmaker, but I do think I'm all right at it. Painting, I, I don't have that confidence, which is so weird because I was trained to do figurative painting. That's what I did my whole time at art school. Isn't that ironic that like the thing that I thought at the time I wanted the most ended up being the thing that I have the most hang up about. Maybe it's because when you focus on something you think you should be good. And so if you're not very good at it, it feels worse. Because when I do other things, I just say, oh, well, I'm not supposed to be good at this. So, heh, cool. But then when it's like, oh, that's supposed to be the thing you do, at least in art school, it was for me. I felt like I should have been better. Yeah, and that was a bummer to like realize that, and hey, I'm not that great at this compared to a lot of other people. That is, I'm okay. I don't think I'm terrible, but I, I don't have that confidence. Confidence is a big part of being an artist. I don't think people realize that. It's that whole fake it till you make it thing. We were talking about that in the Discord the other day. <clears throat> Actually, Blue Will Spirit, you had some great advice. I can't remember exactly what you wrote, but it was really smart about fake it till you make it. And I did so much of that for Art Prof. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, you should listen to me. And people were like, okay. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay, I'll take it. That's cool. <laughs> but honestly, looking back on I do think a lot of my insecurities just come from being crapped on, crapped on in academia. Because when you get crapped on a lot, you start to believe it. You're like, oh, I must really suck. If all these people who are my colleagues think so, then it must be true. And then you get out and you're like, no, you guys were wrong. You guys were so wrong. And I'm cool with it now, but I think it's because I have validation now that I didn't have before. All right. I'm starting to feel a little better. I think some of this was warming up. Did, did you guys know that? I don't know if you guys know this, but when Jordan and I do draw alongs together, one thing that he and I both do, we both like cheat a little bit. We both draw a little. <laughs> Before we start the stream, we, we do always do a little sketch because we get on the stream 20 minutes before and we just do that to get ready and make sure we don't screw things up. But he and I both do that. And I, I really think it's because we, we just worry about being so stiff. And that's kind of what's happening right now is I'm starting to get into the groove a little bit more. Okay. I like this imperfection in this orange. So does everybody see there's like, there's no oil involved right now. It's all straight paint. There's nothing else going on. 
And I want this stroke to be really graphic. So another thing that I'm thinking about is edges. Does everybody see this edge that I just did? I'm gonna really crisp it up. That is such a difference against something like this, which is a lot looser and more atmospheric. And so think about that. When you guys are painting in the later stages, what are my edges like? And I think in general, what you guys don't wanna do, well, I mean, this is personal preference. You guys can do whatever you want. I don't like all my edges to be the same. I don't like everything to be crisp. I don't like everything to be soft. It gets really boring really fast. So I just really aim for both. Some areas are crisp, some are thin, and that tends to work a lot better. Let's beef up some of this in here. I really want this to pop. And I will do the, the little dots on the oranges. I'm just not ready yet because I'm, I'm trying to focus on beefing up some of the shadows right now. Hmm. I'm trying to be a little bit more bold, but it's not happening right now. Hmm. Lean back, doing a lot of, so much squinting today. <laughs> a lot of squinting. This needs to be beefed up. This shadow back here, which is actually like a cast shadow coming from the other one. And actually this is pretty abrupt. See this shadow? It comes up and it goes right into the highlight. So that's a very abrupt transition. Look for that, those transitions and see what you can do. Okay, see this is too harsh. I don't really like that. Okay. Have you guys ever heard there's this really cool, I don't know if it's a technique, but one of my RISD professors told me about it. It's called the artist's run. And it's basically where you run back and forth <laughs> between your painting and let's say, I don't know, 10 feet, and you run in between strokes. It's hilarious. So it would be put down a stroke, run back, run back, put down his throat. It's hilarious, but it's actually really fun. I mean, I don't know that you can sustain that for a long time, but maybe in the beginning, it's really fun because you sort of get a workout at the same time and you get to do the squinting and it's, it's cool. I really, I like the, con I mean, I don't have the space for that, but I like the idea of it, having it make you more efficient. Because if, if you got to run 10 feet between every stroke, oh man, you're not going to waste those strokes. <laughs> this is satisfying though. Right now, this process, I feel very in control. The beginning of the, I did not feel in control. Now I'm starting to feel that a lot more. And then the other thing you guys can do is if you put a little safflower oil on the rag, you can go in and, and remove more. Because we did find last time that the safflower oil does a better job of removing the paint, then water does. Water doesn't really do a great job. Still no safflower in my brush, okay? It, it's really thick and easy to control. It's great. I like how it feels right now, the paint. It just feels good. All right, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. Angie says, I'm guessing impasto wouldn't work with this paint since it doesn't seem to get too thick. Actually, Windsor Newton did send me this big tube of impasto medium. I've not tried it yet, but I'm going to guess that that would be helpful. And what I might do next month is do a palette knife painting. And that might be a good way to use that impasto and really get it to pop. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a very thick painter. In general, I like things thin, but let's try it. I mean, we can see. So Karen says, you think the same as me about these paints. I feel they're very buttery and don't feel like oils. Yeah, it's like real oils. It's not that they have a grain to them, 
but they do feel a little bit more coarse and a little bit less smooth. And I, I like that. I mean, if you like the smoothness and the buttery quality, that's probably better. But again, it's a matter of taste. Like I'm not trying to say that water mixables are bad. They're just not what I used, I'm used to. And I feel like if I had gone into it and somebody said, oh, here's a new type of paint, I would have been like, okay, let's do that. But I think part of the hangup that I'm having right now is people comparing it with the oils and saying, oh, and of course I'm gonna feel like the oils are better, but they're not really better. It, it's more like a Clementine and a Mandarin orange. I mean, they're similar for sure, but Clementines are just a little juicier, <laughs> right? I guess that's part of what it is. Alex says, what am I supposed to do with my rags when I'm done with my water mixable oils? Well, if it were oil paint, I have a fire hazard waste bin, which you can get because you don't want oily rags sitting around in your house as a fire hazard. And so I do that. And then I usually bring them to hazardous waste. These, I guess I would do the same thing because it's oils. The most important thing is that they're in a hazardous waste bucket that you want because I've never seen them spontaneously combust. One of my teachers said they did. I can't attest to that, but yeah. Yonke says, if these are water soluble oil paints, doesn't an oil medium stop that from being a thing? There was somebody, I think in the first video who was a chemist and they had a great explanation that I am forgetting about. It was something about the binder not being oils. I have no idea. We need that chemist person to come back. <laughs> And explain this a little bit more. Oh, Karen says they can go in normal ways. Okay. And Carrie Ann says, your sculptures show your talent, all that wonderful wavy hair. Loved it. Thank you, Carrie. If you guys are wondering what we're talking about, we did a stream, actually we did two that were about painting, drawing hair. And I was explaining how one of the reasons I improved about drawing hair was I sculpted it. So if you guys want to see some of those images, if you scroll back in Art Alonzo, I could post some of those today, some of the sculptures I did where I really had to sculpt hair. That is a lot of work. Fast bender drinking game would work. Absolutely. <laughs> Might not want to do that in the morning though. <laughs> I'm not sure it would, uh, Prepare you very well for the rest of the day. Okay, so Karen says water replaces the solvents, not the medium. Okay. Zarin says, does acrylic and oil paint look dis distinguishable if let's say the painting is made exactly the same? Oh yeah, you, you can tell. If you guys look at an acrylic painting up close, there's something about the sheen it depends on the painting, but I feel that oil paintings have this luminosity that I don't see in acrylics. I mean, I suppose it's probably stuff you can mix into acrylics to get something similar, but I usually can tell the difference. Again, it depends on the paintings. Com Cuke says, you're gonna do more jelly plate monotype tutorials. I can, if you guys are interested, because oh, jelly plates are fun. <laughs> if you guys don't know, you can go to our printmaking tutorials, we have playlist, and you can find that jelly plate monotype tutorial because I make a lot of prints of mushrooms, which is super fun. Karen says it's all about confidence. That's what I think when I see people getting away with making two strokes and calling it art. Yep, <laughs> I think a lot of it is just being willing to stand behind what you do. Oh my God. You guys want to hear something hilarious? You know that masterclass series where it's Martin Scorsese teaches directing and Annie Leibovitz teaches photography. I'm like, okay, you guys are both geniuses, but you're not teachers. Okay, I'm sorry. You're just not. You guys are artists who really practice. And I know why they do that because people go, oh, Martin Scorsese is teaching. And Somebody told me they watched the Annie Leibovitz one and that it was more like a documentary that you didn't really learn a lot. Not to say you can't learn, but that it wasn't really run like a class, which makes sense. She's not a full-time teacher or anything like that. 
And you know what popped up in my Facebook feed? <laughs> Jeff Koons teaches creativity. <laughs> and I just laughed so hard when I saw that. But then I clicked on the comments on that Facebook post. It was hilarious. It was people saying things like, so do we get to learn how to pay other people to make our art? I hope he shows me how to do that. Is this about how to mingle with rich patrons and get them to buy your stuff? Oh, awesome class. <laughs> it, was just, it was so good. Oh my God, that just cracked me up so bad. Well, thank you so much, Jody, who says you're one of my top inspirational artists. Very cool. Okay, so there's a lot of information that people are giving here about rags. So like Argy says, linseed oil rags should be treated as flammables. Yep, going in the safe boxes. Lisa says, once rags are dry, spontaneous combustion is not an issue. The chemical reaction is complete. All right, cool. And Scott says, sculpt along with a simple subject and something like Super Sculpey would be fun sometime if logistics allow. Oh yeah, we can definitely do that. I think we could sculpt like a little head because sculpture takes a long time. That, that's the problem. It's just, if I like sculpted something, oh God, it would be like 18 streams, which I think nobody would want to watch. So that's a lot. Marina's asking, what is the difference between realistic and hyper-realism? I think that depends on the person. People have really different definitions. To me, hyper-realism would be something that looks like a photograph, just to the dot details. Realistic to me probably means something more like recognizable as something in the real world that you can say, oh yeah, that looks like an orange or that looks like a cup. That's my definition, but it really depends on the person. And Glossia says, I used to paint with oils in college. I've been wanting to get back into oils for plain air, but want to stay away from all the chemicals. This is just in time. Oh yeah, for sure. If you guys want safe home studio, this is totally the way to go because I'm not a fan of acrylic. I'm sure you can do cool things. I mean, Alex Rowe is incredible when it comes to acrylic. It's just not my cup of tea. And so I, I guess I would say if I had to pick between water soluble oils and acrylic, I would pick water soluble oils. Because while to me, I don't like them as much as oil paints, I do like them more than acrylic. I do think they have somewhat of that refined quality that I feel is not in acrylics. That's my hang up. A lot of people could definitely argue with me, especially if they're better acrylic painters, which probably is the case. Okay, too much picking on the oranges. Who here talks to themselves when they paint? I think I got this from Deep Dee because Deep Dee really talks to herself when she paints. It's so funny. We need texture in here. So I'm just going to go in and block some of these darks. I'm happy about how I structured the layers though because I think the first video, which by the way, if you guys want to see that first video, this is the thumbnail for the first one. And you can see it's really slippery. It's all over the place. But in the beginning part of the video, it's really obvious what to do. It's like, okay, start the piece, right? The second video where I went in and I did a lot of fixing and a lot of lifting, that video bothered me <laughs> because I didn't like that I was doing all this stuff and I wasn't getting to do the final stuff. Like I really am doing the final stuff now. And I think that begin that middle section can be really hard to handle. I might need to work on this more, but I might not because I'm a fan, at least with paintings, of stepping away sooner. It's like exiting your comedy routine before <laughs> things haven't worked out for you. And I do think paintings really can be overworked in a way that really is not great. And I don't like that. I, I enjoy paintings that have a freshness to them. So I guess for me personally, I would rather have a painting that airs 
on being unfinished, for me, this isn't everybody, than a painting that's over labored because I, I guess I'm just really conscious of my ability to pick because I'm the type of person, I, you guys generally probably don't see me do this, but I'm the type of person, if I can go hyper detailed and I have the resource, I will. And so for me, it's battling that quite a bit, which can be hard because my feeling is that just because you can make it realistic, it doesn't mean you should. And you know, what's interesting is you see old masters doing that. Like there's this Caravaggio painting. Look it up, Supper at Emmaus. There's one he did when he was younger. And yes, it's super annoying that he was that young and could paint that well. Yes, whatever. <laughs> There's always people that make you mad like that. I'm probably the only person that's like actively resentful <laughs> towards other artists. I'm like, screw you. <laughs> screw you, Rembrandt, for making me feel like I suck so bad. <laughs> so there's that. And if you look at the supper at Emmaus, it's a total show off painting. It's like, look what I can do. I can paint grapes that look sumptuous and amazing and look at the glisten. It just, it's so annoying. It's an amazing painting. I mean, I love it. It's got incredible examples of foreshortening and all these great things. Oh, you know what? Okay, does everybody see this green in the leaf? compared to this. This is a great example. And this is why I'm squinting a lot. Do you guys remember that value video that we did very recently about how just because it's a different color doesn't mean it's a different value. And here's a great example where I'm squinting. I think the green leaf is a little bit darker, but they're close. They're really, really close. So that's a place where you have to pick one because sometimes you will have sections that really look the same value wise. Just pick one. Even if it feels like, oh, no, it's not. Ooh, let's do some fan. Um, no, that's a little bit too big. I don't like that. That brush is a little bit too big. And just pick one. That's what I just did. I just said, okay, leaf is darker. <laughs> that helps me. That's what you need. Let's get a really sharp line on this leaf. So really get in there. And I want to make this vein disappear down the middle. And I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a clean brush and just very gently, oh, that did not work. Maybe I'll just dab with the rag. Oh, that's not, maybe a little bit more. Oh shoot, now it's crooked. All right, I think I have to go back in with the same brush. Get it a little bit sharper on the edge. Ah, that's better. Okay, that's what I wanted. <laughs> it's nice when that works out. Like I really want the, oh, look, it worked out for once. This is really nice though. You know what I like about painting? Well, just making artwork in general. I feel that I can really slow down. I don't feel that way in the rest of my life, especially with my kids. They always want everything right away. I'm like, why is this such an emergency? I mean, of course, to them, it's an emergency. But it's like, I need a glass of water now. And I'm like, really? You can't give me a minute? <laughs> no, they cannot. <laughs> and so I oftentimes feel very behind pretty much all day, which is stressful. I don't like it. And when I'm painting, everybody leaves me alone. I put a sign on my office that says, I'm streaming, don't come in. And I don't have to worry. Even when I'm in the freaking shower, my kids are like, I'm, I'm like, what is hard about, <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the shower. What do you think I could do for you right now? Nothing. It's hilarious. Like their way of thinking just cracks me up. It's like, really? You, you think I could do that for you right now? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we need to give this box more dimension. I feel like I, I did not, contrast is not there right now. And I do want to blend this. I might just do some fan brush work and then, well, it's hard. The values down here are really subtle. 
and I won't want them. You know what? I need the fan brush. I was very sad. I went to the art store the other day and I was really hoping they'd have like a baby fan brush, but they didn't. Like, why has nobody thought of that? Like, wouldn't it be nice to have a fan brush that was like really small and you could like really go in and do like tiny, tiny blending? That would be awesome, you guys. Somebody please invent that. That would be great. I would also like to have an easel that floats. Wouldn't that be great? I don't have to worry about storing it anywhere. My easel takes up like half of my storage closet. I don't even use it all the time because the thing is the, when I'm live streaming, the camera angles are really hard on an easel and I don't want to do such a heavy duty setup just for a live stream. It, it's complicated because the setup I have for live streams and paintings, it's not what I would normally do. Normally I would be on an easel, but it's, it's too difficult with all the cameras and stuff. I posted in the Discord actually a photo of what my setup looks like if you guys are interested. Okay, let's try to be more, I think I don't have enough paint on my brush. So much of painting actually, you guys, especially watercolor, is about the quantity of paint that's in your brush and how wet it is. That is like half the battle. If you guys can learn how to control that, that will help you a lot. I discover, especially with watercolor, like if you guys don't have a handle on that, it's like you can't control anything. All right, I want this to be sharp. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna sharpen up this top area like this. And I'm gonna have it dissolve. So it's gonna start sharp at the top and then it's gonna get more and more light down here. I have to say, I am having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> You know what it is? This, this is the fun part. This is the part where you've slaved over making the cake. And it's like, now you're just putting sprinkles on it. And it's so fun. Actually, I made a bouche de Noel. Hope you guys had a good holiday, by the way. I was like so into the painting that I didn't even remember. Oh yeah, we just had all these holidays. So I made this bouche de Noel and it's in the Discord. If you guys want to see it, maybe I can post it again. And you have to do all this work. Like making the meringue mushrooms is a lot of work. And then you have to roll the cake. This is the part where you're like putting the mushrooms on top of the Yule log, which is so fun. Oh my God. But it's like making the meringues and <laughs> rolling the cake. And put, it's a lot of work until you get to the fun part, which is quite a bit. Oh, you know what I need? I need some variation here. So everybody see it's very subtle. I don't know, maybe this is not the painting for me to get all strokey with. Or maybe I'm just being a wimp. And wimp because I know I'm pretty good at this, but I I don't know that. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> part of live streaming for me at least is feeling like I, I do have to make something that looks like something. Because <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> not that helpful to some people. Yeah, I need more variation. Like there's a lot of subtleties in here. Oh guys, I'm so excited. Speaking of reference photos. And by the way, if you guys joined late, just so you know, the link to the reference photo, it's in the YouTube video description. So if you guys wanna download that, that is a high resolution version of this photo and you'll really be able to get in and see those differences because the, the photo is so good. But anyway, what, what I was so excited about, one of my family members is house sitting right now. And the people who they are house sitting for have a huge yard of chickens. And I flipped. I was like, oh my God, I need to take pictures for the <laughs> Flickr page so people can have really high res versions of chickens. Because here's the thing, if I was just at some farm, I, I don't know that they would let me go into, they probably wouldn't like go into the cage with the chickens. And I asked the person who was staying there if the chickens were gonna be afraid or if I was gonna bother them. And she's like, no, they're fine. So I went in, I was like two feet from a chicken. It was awesome. Although there are a bunch of them that were being a pain in the butt. They were like hiding under all these branches. I couldn't see them. 
that was a big pain. But I got awesome chicken photos and I am so excited to upload those for you guys. It's going to be really fun. Okay, so up here, oh, this is going to be fun. Let's just really thicken this up because I'm trying to distinguish between the leaf and I do want to keep the atmosphere of the leaf back here. But you know what I'm going to do is I am going to put in just a little hint of the vein of the leaf. Very, very minor. I, I don't want it to be too big of a deal, but this is where like a very thin glaze. Oh, that feels good, guys. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> By the way, who's painting with me? And if you are painting or drawing with me, are you doing a new drawing or painting? Or are you working on the same painting that you started in the first pass? Just let me know. It's the greatest thing, you guys, when I see what you're making. Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Tom Cuke says, I fooled Clara, has fooled herself into thinking I wouldn't watch 18 streams of one project. Well, that makes you a very patient person, Tom Cuke. But I will say, we have a, such a smart audience. I'm sorry to brag a little, but when I look at the comments on our YouTube channel, they're so smart and they're so thoughtful and super helpful. And same thing with the Discord. And I go to other YouTube channels and they don't have comments like that. I mean, it's fine. The comments are like, cool, awesome. Love how you draw, really nice. And, and that's cool. But I just am like, our audience is really smart. Burn says 6 p.m. in Germany joined accidentally. Oh, awesome. I love it. Who here for whom this is the first time watching us live, maybe you've known about us for a while, but there's a lot of people that lurk. And oftentimes I don't feel that I have a very accurate sense of who's really watching. Of course, there's people like people who are talking in the chat and people who make comments. But I think there are a lot of people that watch that have never done that. Like we did an MFA critique for Chamen soon. You guys can take a look at it. He's got great work. And he told me he'd been watching us for years. I was like, are you kidding? Like I've never seen your name anywhere. And that was really cool to see that. Joanna says, I'm new to oil painting. Can you tell me some basics? Also, your painting looks so realistic. Thank you. I would say watch our oil painting tutorial. That's the best way because huge question. And that tutorial, it's actually two parts. There's part one where I go over more of the tech stuff and part two is me painting a lobster. So watch that tutorial. And then if you guys have further questions, come hang out with us in the Discord because it's where all the cool kids hang out. I was not a cool kid in high school, so I made my own cool kid hangout, which is the Discord. So come in there and then ask me questions. That would be really cool. Parazad says, tips on how to know that a painting is done and not over or underworked. It's really tricky. We actually do have a video. It's under the artistic process playlist. How do I know a painting's finished? There's no concrete signal. To me, how I usually know to stop is when I'm like picking at the painting and not a lot is changing. If I'm not making an impact, it probably means that I need to stop, but it really, really depends. Some people it's very obvious. It's not for me. I, I go back and forth. So sometimes what I'll do, and I might do that with this one, is I'll work on it for a while and then I'll step back and put it away where I can't see it for two weeks. And then I'll bring it out and then I'll evaluate it because right now I'm working on it. I can't judge. And so I really need to just focus on that and do the judging later on. Art of Auditor says works that are unfinished are easier to work more with than art that is overdeveloped and trying to remove details. Oh yeah. I mean, once you've gone into that detail universe, it's hard to pull it back unless it's something like wash that you can rehydrate. But even then it's very, very challenging. And let's see. 
Tom Cuke says, when working in color, it's really hard for me to get deep contrast and shadowy sections, particularly in marker, but also in general, any tips. I feel like I get scared when doing dark areas. You know what it is? You have to use those dark sections in moderation. It's like a really strong spice. It, it will just, it's like your secret weapon, okay? <laughs> like the darkest darks. You don't want to put them everywhere because actually they make things very flat. And so the darkest darks, you just pull them out when you have to. And most of the rest should be grays on this, you know, within that area of value. And so I would, if you were, if I was you guys, I would go back and I would watch the stream about value and look at those Chris Van Allsburg pieces. Because if you look at his illustrations, there's very few blacks. Most of it is gray. And he does an amazing job of activating those grays so that he does not have to use that secret weapon all the time. Angie says it never ends. I was 40 when I pouted up my mom and asked for a cup of tea. Why can't you make it yourself? I told her because she made it so much better. You know, I have this theory, you guys. Tell me if you agree. My feeling is that whatever age you met somebody at, they are that age forever. So basically, if it's your kids, they are a newborn forever. <laughs> like you never see them differently. Like when I see my mom sometimes, she's like, make sure you wear a coat. I'm like, I know. I know that I should wear a coat when I go outside, but she's like worried. And I do the same thing with my kids. I'm sure I'm going to do that as well when they're older. So, and, and that's the funny thing about the teaching artists here at Art Prof. Most of them I met when they were like 18 in college. Lauren was probably 18 when I met her. And to me, she's always 18. She's not 18 anymore, but I still see her in that light in a way. <laughs> Let's see. Kurt Gordon found us by accident. Well, very cool. Thank you so much for joining. And Lisa says, love the additive subtractive technique you're using. Water soluble does seem like an indoor option for trying this technique. Oh yeah, I cannot paint with oils right now. I don't mind painting with oils at home as long as I'm in a room that has lots of windows and I can open all of them. And I usually let the room air out. I'll keep the windows open for a few hours afterwards. So that's fine. But I mean, it's 30 degrees right now. So it's freezing. And there's no way that I can take care of that. And Elijah says, I like to take a picture of painting, turn it black and white to just see the values and what it needs to change. Oh, absolutely. This is easier because this is just one color. So it's not difficult right now, but if it was full out color, for sure, that would be really challenging. Yeah, Joe Nowhere, look at the playlist. It's called Artistic Process, and you will find a video that's called How Do I Know My Artwork is Finished? And you guys will be able to take a look at that. Okay, let's do some more painting and a lot of seeing. I, I'm going to be real slow today, guys. And you guys are so patient and wonderful to appreciate that. I mean, I'm the most impatient, the most impatient YouTube watcher. I have no attention span. I know how people are like, kids nowadays, I'm like, I'm worse than they are. <laughs> so I, I don't think I get to criticize people for having no patience when it comes to watching a YouTube video. They say that statistically, People decide within seven seconds if they want to keep watching a video. And I'm like, seven? I, it takes me like three seconds. I'm so judgmental of other people's YouTube videos. I know that's terrible to say, but I am. I mean, most of that is because I just don't have time to sit around and watch YouTube videos because I, I have too much on my plate and I've got kids and I have to take care of that. But usually you, you really can tell if the video is going to be helpful or not. I mean, I guess I watch tech videos. Like if I need to know, okay, how do I stream this? Or what's the best camera? I'll watch stuff like that. But a lot of art YouTubers, they take so long to explain things. And sometimes they don't actually start doing anything until 10 minutes into the video. And that's sort of boring. Although James Gurney, I could watch everything he does. He's amazing. He's such a good painter. 
So I guess he's the one person I, I do have a lot of patience for, but maybe that's what it is. It's like you have to build that patience with your audience so that they, they know what you're doing is not going to be a waste of their time. And it's hard because I, I don't have a lot of YouTubers that I listen to regularly. The one guy I listen to is Nick Nimmin because he has so many good YouTube tips. I listen to him compulsively. Like I never miss an episode, but that honestly is because I just need to be updated on YouTube stuff because YouTube is like a video game. It really is. I never thought about it that way. In fact, for the longest time, I barely touched our YouTube channel. I saw YouTube as more a storage place for our videos. But then my brother sent me all this stuff and I was like, really? And I realized it's not, it's, it's a game you have to play. There's all these things. And if you play that game, it works. And that's why, I guess the reason I figured it out, you know what it was? It's because we had something on our form that said, how did you find out about our prof? And literally every single person on that form wrote YouTube. And I was like, really? I was sort of expecting people would mention a broader range, but they didn't. It, every, like it would be like one out of a hundred people would say, oh, Instagram or that artsy video, that artsy article. And I just was so surprised by that. I mean, it's so consistent that I actually took that question off the form because I knew exactly what people were going to say. I was like, it's not worth asking in that situation. But yeah, once I realized that, I was like, oh my God, I've been doing this all wrong. It's funny, the way people talk about YouTube, YouTubers at least, it's like the YouTube gods. You have to appease the gods of YouTube. So YouTube will reward you. YouTube will show you to the world. It's very funny. It kind of cracks me up. It's a whole other world, I think, compared to what I'm used to with academia. Although, God, you guys, I'm so glad to be out of there. Why didn't I leave sooner? I know why, because I had a big hang up because I, I put all my eggs in one basket and that was a mistake. But you don't really know that until you've done it. So that's hard. Yeah, like I actually had somebody who was so rude. I think it was in a Facebook group. And I think I wrote some post about academia, really treating people badly and stuff. And this person was like, if you don't like it, get out of it. I'm like, it's, it's not really that easy <laughs> when you have kids to feed and it's not so easy to change careers. I mean, what I'm doing right now is a risk with Art Prof because we're not totally financially secure. I'm hoping that that will change in the coming year if I put all my time into it, but it's a risk. It's, it's not really guaranteed at all. Okay, guys, time to do some squinting. And if you're painting, you should squint with me. I don't like this edge. I think it needs, I don't want it to be too sharp. I'm not a fan of sharp lines in paintings. I feel like in general, they make things look really flat. But what I do sort of like is a flat edge like this one that gets smudgy. So it starts out really sharp and then smudges itself a little bit. And actually, I need to beef up this black. Yeah, the black, you really have to make it thick for it to get the full value range. Hmm. I don't like, there's a beautiful reflected light here and I feel like I'm making it too obvious. Maybe it should be a little softer. Maybe if I soften that edge, it's hard because there's a lot going on right now in this painting. Ugh. See, see, this is way too much paint. So what I'm gonna do is just take a rag and just work some of the paint out. I don't need to put water in it. I don't wanna do that because I still want the brush to be pretty dry. And so I, I think it's better for me just to wipe it with the rag. That will work better. This is really fun though. <laughs> this is really satisfying. Who here is at that point where it's like, oh, I waited so long to add this and now I can put it in. That's awesome. Not my painting, but that process. <laughs> Look, I'm not that. 
I don't know. That doesn't happen very often. How often, you guys, do you feel as an artist that you're like, slam dunk? Not very often for me. Also, guys, I have an idea for a series of paintings that I'm very excited about. I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. But um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I shot that tutorial in Utah. You guys probably saw the one where I painted mushrooms and Goblin Valley and all these places. If you haven't, check it out. It's like, it's not our most popular video. And it bums me out because like, it's one of my favorite videos that we produce, but it just doesn't have the reach. I guess that some of the other stuff has. And so that video has multiple parts. That video is probably gonna have four parts. I've released two of them so far. And part four, I paint this bread that my mother-in-law makes that I, I'm not joking is the best bread on the planet. And I know, I know everybody's like my blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand how good this bread is. It's made by this, well, the recipe from this bakery in San Francisco called Tartine. It's such a hard recipe. I tried it and failed failed so bad. I couldn't even get the starter to work. It was very sad. But anyway, the last painting I did on that trip was a painting of her bread. And since we moved here, since my mother-in-law is local now, she keeps bringing us bread. And then my sister-in-law started making it and she kept bringing us bread. <laughs> Actually, we, we were living with her a little, for a little while while we were trying to waiting to get our house, which we're in right now. And she would just make bread and she would just show up with bread. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there's some bread on the counter. Nice. I like this a lot. And <laughs> so we called her the bread fairy. We're like, oh, look, the bread fairy showed up. So now we have two bread fairies. And I was just thinking, wow, every single loaf of bread had its own personality because the reason I painted that bread that my mother, the one that's actually in the tutorial, the reason I painted that bread is because she baked this one loaf that had like horns on it. It was so funny looking. And that's why I wanted to paint it. Cause I was like, whoa, this is awesome. So I did that, but just every loaf of bread that they bring us, it's got some funky thing to it. Like we had one that was like lopsided and then something would always happen like my sister-in-law would bring it over and she'd be like, oh, well, this one didn't quite rise. And like every single loaf of bread had a story. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And if I ever have the time to do it, I will do a bread series. Wouldn't that be fun? Just watercolor paintings of bread over and over and over again, like a portrait of bread. Would love to do that. Just I'm bogged down with spreadsheets and crap. It makes it hard for me to do anything. I mean, I'm hoping someday I'll have like an admin person who can do that for me, but I don't right now. And I think it's a ways off before that happens. So maybe someday I'll get along to that, but not right now. But yeah, that was, I don't know. And I also like that bread is such a humble subject. It's like everybody knows bread everybody knows what it's like and it's such a comfort to people something about bread that just it's so basic i suppose oh man now i want to do that but i gotta do these paintings of cats for my sister <laughs> so i have to paint the cats first before i get to paint my bread okay let's do a little bit of work on the stems because i i do want to keep these atmospheric leaves but i do want to couple of sharp graphic edges. So there's one up there. And you know, maybe this one, just like a little, something just feels stiffer. Because although I want to keep the atmosphere, I do think I need this. So like the branch continues here. I guess what I like about some of this stuff is like things fading in and out. So it's like you can have a branch that becomes crystal clear and then maybe it fades a little. So what I'm doing right now is just a couple 
moments of that. And that's really fun. Okay. More squinting. A lot of squinting today, guys. Can't do this without looking and looking. Because you know something? I'm not really looking at the reference right now. I'm looking more at what the painting needs. Because actually, you know what? Somebody asked a great question in the Discord the other day. They said, well, I'm using this reference photo and I need a better brush. Do I have to use... Sometimes I do this, by the way. I take a brush that's clean and I just use it to blend. That's an effective way to do that. But anyway, this person asked, do I have to use the same color that's in the reference photo? I'm like, of course not. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. And so right now with these leaves, I'm not really looking at the photo. I'm just saying, what do I want? What would benefit this painting? So the reference photo in the later parts of the painting for me becomes less and less important. Hmm. I think here I want another sharp edge. Isn't this satisfying? See, it's like it starts sharp here and then it disappears. I think I could use another sharp edge here. So this is really the part of the painting where I'm inventing a lot more. I'm not married to the reference photo. That's pretty cool. Kind of like that. More looking. I think a little touch back here. I don't want this to be so, so dark, but it needs a little more structure, like especially the twigs. I think what matters to me is that they, they feel stiff. That's the important thing. I'm not that worried about, oh, they need to be so well articulated. I just want them to look stiff. That's all that's, all that's important to me. That's pretty fun. See, it's starting to feel a little bit hard to distinguish the difference. So pretty soon it's going to be time to step away and do another pass of, oh, do I need to do that? You know what I do want to do though? Hang on, I'm looking at I'm looking at this leaf here. Let's bother. I feel like it doesn't have enough variation. Is that what it is? Maybe if I add some of these veins. Maybe like a really dark vein down the back, because I do see a little bit of that. Yeah, that's a little better. I, I think this part got a little muddled. I really like that. Okay, and now let me grab my rag. Let's just blend that in a little bit more. Sometimes you can just dab with the rag. You don't always have to wipe with it. It's a really cool tool. And I'm gonna really, ooh, that's a giant blog. I'm gonna really sharpen that branch so it, it really sticks out. And even now I'm painting, but I'm squinting while I paint. That's how much squinting matters, you guys. That's how much you have to really think about and looking closely because th this is a level of looking that I didn't do in the first pass, for sure. Because that level of subtlety is not necessary in the beginning. You still need it, but you do need it later. Yeah, this stem is still, I don't like this stem. It's still a little bit, I want it to be more dramatic. It's a little bit better, but you know what? I need some definition behind the orange. I think that's a lot better. Okay, that seems a little bit more dramatic. Okay, let me see what you guys are talking about in the chat. Jaco? Sorry if I said your name wrong. I've had so many people tell me to squint while I paint, but I never really found it useful. Why do you do it? You know what it is? A big part of it is getting to see the whole painting. Because here's the thing, the stuff I'm doing right now with this teeny tiny brush is so picky. I'm like doing these tiny little things. And so 
if I'm doing these tiny little things, I'm really fragmenting the painting. I'm looking at here, I'm looking at there. I'm not looking at the whole thing. But when you squint, you can't see those little details. And so you do end up looking at the whole. That becomes harder because in the beginning part of the painting, which by the way, if you missed it, this is part one. In the beginning part, I am looking at the whole thing because I'm trying to get everything down. But right now I'm going piece by piece. And when you go piece by piece, it's really easy for the painting to just get chopped up into a bunch of little pieces. So when I squint, I don't tend to do that so much. And we have a question from Sleepwalker. How long does it take to dry shorter than regular oils? It depends on the color actually, because I found that with oil painting, there are certain colors that dry fast, like yellow ochre could dry in two days. Cadmium red, oh my God, it's like two weeks. So it depends. These, and I'm using burnt sienna right now. I think it took five, four days to dry to the touch. I mean, within two days, I could feel it getting tacky. But yeah, about four days, I would say. I, it could change. I mean, maybe depending on the color, it might be different. And also how much safflower oil you put into it. I don't know exactly. I didn't put a huge amount of safflower oil in it, but it's really hard to tell. Okay. Let's see what else people are talking about. Com Cuke says, Angie, exactly. How is anyone supposed to learn anything when you don't talk or explain anything? You can watch someone do math, but if you don't explain it, you won't learn anything. Art is the same way. Exactly. That's like those master classes. Because actually, I think, this is my theory, I think that people who are really good at things actually don't tend to be good teachers. You know why? Because they're so good at it. They can't comprehend what it's like to be bad at soccer. Like I'm, I would be terrible at soccer. And if Mia Hamm or, oh God, what's her name? Rapino, Megan Rapino. If any of them were to try to teach me soccer, I just would be a disaster. They're so good at it. I don't think that when you're that good at something, you're good at breaking it down. Like I'm not very good at painting, but I know what the problems are. I know all the things that will go wrong because I've done them all. <laughs> and so that's a lot of a uh, big difference. Karen says, I wanna see the Kathy Speranza video first, please. I know you guys, I'm trying so hard. It's just the editing on the videos takes so long and I'm a one woman production. I mean, I wish we had the budget to hire a professional editor so I don't have to do all that stuff, but I just can't afford it right now. That's the difficulty is we're at a point where our reach is very big and there's a lot of people that follow us, which is phenomenal. I'm so grateful for that every single day. But the consequence is that with the growth, our budget grows and so does our staff needs. And we're not at the point where our audience has gotten really big, but we don't have to do that. Like our budget doubled this year compared to last year. And so consequently, even though we are doing better in terms of Patreon and stuff, it still has not caught up yet. So I really hope that because unfortunately the edited videos, they get pushed to the side because they're not like the live streams, which are all the time. Art Girl is asking, will you be adding color to this painting? I'm not going to. In theory, this could be a underpainting but I just want to move on because there's a certain point with painting that it's just better to do another piece because I can take what I learned from this experience and apply it to the next painting. And so the next stream for a paint along, I'm actually going to do that co complementary color exercise that Alex and I talked about in the complementary color stream on red and green. And so that's going to be like a hardcore, like mixing tutorial. We're going to talk about color theory, we're gonna talk about all of the interaction. That's such a useful mixing exercise. So we'll do that. And then after that, I might do a palette knife painting. Although I don't know, we'll see. Maybe after the stream, you guys tell me in Discord what you want to cover. I know people are really aching for me to do a flesh mixing tutorial, 
But the thing is a big part of that is palette knife painting. So I feel that I would like to do that first. Lisa says, someday I hope to learn the patients do painting and drawing in steps with breaks. I want instant results. I'm heavy handed. Oh my God, I'm the same way, Lisa. I don't have the patience. My friend Kathy Speranza has the, like she will just like contemplate for days. And when I shot some of the tutorial, I, I just was blown away by her patience in the process. I don't have that. That's why I like printmaking because printmaking is like painting, but you get instantaneous results. So I don't have to worry about it. Roanne says, burnt sienna, so beautiful, even without the other colors. Yep, just straight burnt sienna. This is the one that I was using. I like burnt sienna because it has a lot of yellow in it. For example, there's also burnt umber, which is a beautiful brown, but this has a little bit of a spike to it. And it's really the yellow that I think brings up the luminosity. So my theory is that if I did the same painting in burnt umber, it's not that it would be dark, but it wouldn't have that glow that the yellow gives the burnt sienna. That's my opinion, but you can do whatever you want. And Lisa says, if you really struggled and learned with multiple teachers plus some empathy, then an excellent artist could be an excellent teacher. But yes, teaching is a separate skill. Yeah, I mean, I think it also depends on where you're at. Because if you're somebody, you have so much experience painting and you really know what you're doing from a tech view, watching somebody who's really good at it probably would benefit you more than if you had never painted in your life and you're starting from scratch. So that's a great point because it does depend on where you are and what's going on. And Lucy is asking, what do you do with your finished works? I have so many, I don't have space on my walls. I'm sorry to be depressing you guys, but a lot of it gets tossed. I know, I know, I wish that was not the case, but when you've been making art as long as I have for decades and you move <laughs> to another state, you just, you can't hold on to all of it. I mean, a lot of it I will try to give to friends and that always makes me feel better. But I had some sculptures, I, I did not know what to do with them, I'm like, I mean, it hurts, but you have to make decisions about that at some point. It's really a pain in the butt. And let's see. Wow, there's so many great comments. I'm sorry I can't get to all the comments, you guys. It's just difficult. Joe is asking, there's a music education course and a music performance course. Is there an art education course, like a course how to teach art, any art pedagogy? Well, we do have a section on artprof.org, which is called Teaching and Learning Art Online. And you guys can find that's in the main menu of artprof.org. And there's a lot of videos there for teachers. Most of it is emphasizing remote teaching because that's what people need right now. But a lot of the pedagogy just get mixed in to that content. But if that's something people want to know about, let me know. Because I did have a teacher who emailed me really recently, and they said that they really wanted to get a video on how to write an art prompt. And I was thinking, wow, that would be a great idea, because there are certain tricks to that that I think are hard, unless you have a ton of experience writing terrible lesson plans, which I do. <laughs> no problem in that department. The other thing too is that I have a couple tricks for writing a prompt. So here's one of them. I will have somebody explain to me the prompt because actually Kat Huang was teaching a class on comics. And so what I usually do with the TAs is I'll mentor them and give them advice about how to start teaching a class and she had this prompt and I think it was something like make a comic about your future and I was like okay that's a great premise but it's too vague because oh god think about your future Ugh, that's a lot to unpack and so I said to Kat listen the way you test if an art assignment is going to be good is can you come up with an idea within 10 seconds. 
And so she said to me, okay, well, let's do the future prompt. And I couldn't come up with something. I was too indecisive. I was like, I don't know. There's a billion things. What am I going to talk about here? And so I said, okay, that's not a good prompt because I couldn't come up with something fast enough. And so we came up with one that was more concrete and it ended up being make a comic about a dream. And I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do because people have recurring dreams or nightmares and there aren't a lot of people that don't dream. Maybe there are, I have no idea. There's probably some study about it, but anyway, that's a good test. So if you give yourself the prompt and you have a hard time coming up with something really, your students are going to have a hard time. It doesn't matter what age. It has to be something that you can respond to immediately. Because if you can't, if it takes you a while, your students are going to have a really hard time. So I would keep in mind, it's hard with a prompt though, because you want something that has flexibility so students feel that they can express themselves and make it their own. But you also don't want something that's too vague because then they don't know what to do or how to start. But then if it's too vague, <laughs> people don't know what to do. It's a very hard balance, I think, for a lot of teachers. Because what I don't like, you know those projects where you already know what it's going to look like? Like it's already been done for you basically. And everybody's stuff is the same. You know what I don't like? Ugh, this really gets on me. The let's make a work in the style of this. Like my daughter who was in elementary school, she had a project where it was paint a landscape like starry night. And I was like, that is not a good assignment. That, that does not ask the kids to have their own voice. And that really bothers me. I don't like that. Or actually, Yayoi Kusama, the polka dot lady. <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys have seen her stuff. I've seen so many projects where it's let's draw a pumpkin and put dots on it. I'm like, who, what do you learn from this? Really, what? You learn how to copy somebody. I don't think that's a good lesson. And you guys can disagree with me. That's fine. But that annoys me. I don't like that. Or you know what other project that I think is sort of silly is my daughter got it. You've probably seen it on Facebook. It's all over the place. It's take an artwork by what's his face? Ar Archibald, I can't remember. The guy that makes portraits that are made out of fruit. And so they say to the kids, okay, make a portrait that's made out of fruit. And it doesn't get good results. I mean, I think you could do something cool with that, but the way it's framed, I think for a lot of kids, it's not well done. And I know my daughter was annoyed. She was like, oh, I don't wanna do this. This is really boring. I don't feel that this is something I can gain from. And I, ugh, it just bothers me. I don't know, like most of the time my kids think I'm an idiot. I know, I know I'm an idiot, but, uh. I think they're starting to realize that you do know a little bit about art because my daughter will complain about sometimes the projects that she gets. And I think she sees the stuff I'm doing around the house and while well, she does not like to admit it, I think knows some of it's better. Actually, sometimes I talk to them about my YouTube channel. I just mention it. I'm like, I'm so excited. We almost at 100k subscribers. Very exciting. I remember the days that we had like three people watching live and I was like, oh my god, six people are watching. <laughs> oh my god. And my daughter's like, I'm not impressed. You don't have five million views. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> that, is, that is not something I have right now. So she's like, I'll be impressed if you have a million. I'm like, uh, don't hold your breath. Might be a little while. Although you know what's hilarious? And I take this as a compliment, actually. Time to do some more. You know what? I don't like this lower. I think this lower section of the box is really boring. I, I need to do something here. Okay. So anyway, now I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I, I need to darken this whole section. It's, it's subdividing in a way that I don't like here. Yeah. 
I think it needs to be more simple. I, I think I subdivided too much. So now I'm going to go back in. Maybe somebody can remind me what I was talking about. <laughs> then I can get back to it later. <laughs> yeah, this, this got really, it's got a little picky. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, because I don't know that I want like a thick, maybe I'll do a sharp edge here and I'll let it dissolve into the soft part. So I'll, I'll go down there and then I'll remove some with my rag. Ugh, that was a little crooked. Let's fix that. Make that a little bit more straight like that. Uh, I will say though, if we ever hit a million subs, I will dance. And it's going to be really embarrassing, but I will do that for you guys if we ever get there. <laughs> I remember what I was going to say. We get a lot of comments and they're very nice. I appreciate them so much. People say, I cannot believe how underrated your channel is. Why doesn't this channel have more subs? I'm like, I don't know, because <laughs> I'm not painting in a bikini. I have no idea. Although there are really people that do that. I didn't know. But my husband who uses Twitch once in a while, he said that there are people that paint in very revealing clothing because it gets people to watch. I'm like, are you serious? That just makes me very sad. Is that better on the... You know what I want to do? I want to remove here. Maybe let that transition be a little slower. So yeah, think about how abrupt the transition is. Like this is a pretty abrupt transition. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit darker. More squinting. I think I'm almost ready to do the textures. I feel, is this too dark? I'm not really sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm really on the fence about this section. Like I, I sort of want it to be fadey, but then I worry it doesn't have enough bite. Let's put a little safflower oil on the rag. Let's see if I can get that a little sharper. Oh, now I erased it. That's bad. Okay, let's put it back. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe the YouTube gods don't like us enough. It's strange because we did have two videos that they didn't go viral, but they had crazy growth. It was the oil and acrylic tutorial. And the second one was a portfolio critique. And the other one was the gouache video. So it was like those videos had pretty good performance, but then they just spiked, like all of a sudden went crazy. And then it went down again. So I, I honestly do not know, guys. I'm so confused by the YouTube gods. It's so weird. Algorithm and the YouTube gods can reward me. Oh, you know what I want to do? I think I want this edge up here at the top. Let's just do a little bit there. Because I do want the edge of that orange. Oh yeah, that's kind of nice. I sort of like that. Maybe a little bit more, a little sharper. I might go through and just see where I want to add some sharp lines. Actually, I want to do a little bit of rubbing here. I mean, th this is very picky work, what I'm doing right now. This is not what you do in the beginning of a painting at all. This is totally like the end. The end is getting near. Just touching up very subtle edges like this. I give that. Uh, I don't know if I want that reflected light to be that strong. Hang on. I love this reflected light. It's beautiful, but I think I'm make it, making it a little bit too clear. Oh no, I need some more paint. Hang on. Let's get some of the paint out. All right. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. All right. 
C. Cantrell says this is a serious niche that takes thought, persistence, and a deep interest. That's true. And to listen to me talk <laughs> takes concentration. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just not that entertaining <laughs> the way other people are. I just don't feel the need to do that. Dara's asking, what substrate are you painting on? I'm painting on gesso board which is created by the company Ampersand. And actually, if you guys want all the links to the materials, they're in the video description below. So you can actually see the Amazon link for all of those things. Miku is saying, that is so beautiful already. Thank you so much. And Art Maven says, it's next to impossible to assess a vague prompt, but that tends to make my prompt so tight that students feel overwhelmed by them. It's such a hard balance. And I definitely have had projects that bombed so bad, <laughs> so, so bad. You know what I do for those of you guys who are teachers? I have a couple, how should we say, tried and true projects that I know are gonna do well because I've done them so many times and gotten good results. If I have a project that bombs, I tried to do it with more than one class because I've had projects that I knew were good, like my classic projects that would not do so well with the class. And oftentimes it was because of the class. The class wasn't very good and they didn't get very into it. But then I would have like another class that did really well. And I was like, okay, it's not the project that class did not do so well. So I always give projects a second chance unless I really hate it. <laughs> it depends, but uh, I will do that. And then, for every class I teach, let's say I have 10 assignments, okay? I'll have maybe eight that I know are gonna do well and I'll put in two that are the wild card. And those are my experimental projects. So I know the vast majority of the projects are gonna be fine, but pretty much every semester, I would always put in one that was new because honestly, when you teach for that long, you gotta keep it different, you gotta shake it up. I know teachers who literally the same curriculum for 30 years and that's fine. There's definitely a way to do that. But for me, I got bored doing that. And so I would just always introduce something new that I didn't do before. And it would keep things fresh, which was really, really fun. Practice guy is asking, how many years have you studied art or just learned how to do it? Well, I drew all the time when I was a kid. And actually, I'm going to do a stream. I don't know if we have time next month, but I have all my childhood sketchbooks. So I'm going to go through those and show you guys what I was making when I was eight, maybe even younger up until now. So I always did it a lot, but I didn't really get into it until high school, probably sophomore year I was getting into it. And then obviously I went to art school and I graduated in 98. And so I guess outside of art school, I guess it's been 22 years since art school. So as a professional artist, about two decades, I would say, but it was slow for me. I mean, my art career, when I look back on it, I mean, it's okay, but I was not a superstar and I never showed in a big museum and I did not have people fawning over me and I was never in the New Yorker or anything like that, but I paved my own path and I'm so happy with where it is right now. So yeah, I would say about 20 years as a pro doing obviously exhibitions and, and putting my stuff out there and applying to artist grants and things like that. Sleepwalker says, I love how crisp and shiny the leaves in the front look. Yeah, that's a little bit of atmospheric perspective. In fact, let's go back and pick at that leaf <laughs> a little bit more now that you bring it up because there are some things about it. Actually, I think it needs some rag work maybe like in here, just lift out. Cause I, I do want to smooth it out a little bit more. I think I got a little picky about the details. Th there is such a thing as too many details, guys. There really is. Just because something is detailed, it doesn't make it better. In fact, sometimes it's worse. So don't always tell yourself that details are the way to go. Some of my favorite paintings are paintings that are not detailed. Ones that are more suggestive or, I'm not saying you can't make great realistic work. You know who's great? If you guys want a really good contemporary painter, oh, Antonio Lopez Garcia. Oh my God. I saw a show of his work. It was at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. This is a long time ago. 
it's probably like at least 15 years ago. Oh my God. One of the best shows I ever saw in a museum in my life. Go look him up. I love his stuff. He's got these pencil drawings of gourds. Oh, so good. Oh my God. I love his work. So check him out. If you guys like realism, that is a great example of good realism. Okay, let's do another pass on this edge because I do want to crisp up just a few spots. Get them to feel, I don't know. I feel like I there, there is like a little bit of a fuzz here and I don't think I'm getting that. So I just want to fix the edge of where that is. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a great time working on this. Not because I think it's an amazing painting, but just, it's fun. I need to paint more. I mean, that's why I like these streams because it's like an excuse for me to drop everything and paint, which I don't do very often because most of the time I'm like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. This is more important. This has to get done. And it's hard to make time for this unless it's a stream. So it's great. And we are, actually, I might've already done it posted the January schedule so you guys can see. Also, if you want to sign up to be on the email list, because we always send a notification every month when the new schedule is posted, you just get one email a month and just go to the live streams page on ourprof.org and there's a button there. So that way you guys can do that. We have the same thing for art dares. So if you want to sign up for the art dares list and you want to know once a month when it's announced, which we're doing tomorrow, by the way. You can definitely sign up for that. Okay, way too much paint in my brush. Okay. And I think next what I want to do is get some of that texture, but I don't want to do too much. This is a really nice comment from Luis. I think being close to 100K is a major achievement as a professional artist and professor. Respect. Thank you. I mean, guys, blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> into those subscribers. Oh my God. Just cut me open and let me bleed. It's like a medieval surgery session. <laughs> That's how it feels. <laughs> Miku saying, is there any specific reason why I see a lot of oil painters use that color as a sketch? I suspect that if they're doing a figurative painting, it's probably because burnt sienna is a pretty good base color for just general flush tone. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It's just an earthy brownish tone that will work for anything. I mean, you can make it lighter and darker depending on what you're doing, but it's just beautiful. I love burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is so awesome. Okay. Uh, we have a question here. Oh, okay. That was the same question. Okay. Here we go. All right. More squinting, guys. I'm still not happy with this. That spot is bugging me. Oh, you know, it needs to get darker. That's what I need. I think it's on. Oh, okay. Here, under here, it needs to get darker. So I don't want dramatic contrast, but it's already so dark that it, it needs another pass. And actually, that means this has to come down as well, because I don't like that you can't see that edge. Is that too dark? Maybe I need to push it down. Yeah, because I don't want it to be that dark. And then maybe this can come down. It's a value thing. Like I really need this to just be more subtle. Oh, and then this needs to come down. Okay. It's all relative. Yeah, it just needs a little... Is that too bright? Yeah, it is. Okay, let's bring this down. Okay, so the whole section on the right-hand side, I brought down the contrast and you still have the contrast there, but we're squinting, we're squinting. I'm not just squinting, I'm pushing my body back. If I could, I would get up and walk away, but not a lot of space for that right now. Hmm. Does that need to be darker? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. And by the way, I will be posting 
the final painting on Instagram and I'll post it on Discord because YouTube videos, you, you can't really see the color or the close up very well. And so that, that's a better place for you guys to really see all the subtlety that's in the painting. Hmm. Oh, I think maybe it needs a little more. I mean, the, the difference here is so minor, but it, it matters. <laughs> it really matters. Yeah, this is all too light. I, I need to... I need to darken these two. Okay, let's work the paint out of the rag. Too much paint here. Like if you really want to just touch something up, you, you don't want to have a lot of paint in your brush. Yeah, this is a very light glaze. Just to push the leaf forward like that. And then does that need to get darker? Yeah, I think it does. But see, I don't want it to get flat. Like, I still want that darkness. More stepping back. It's hard because I'm starting to get some glare on the painting, which is not helping. Okay, I need to redraw this. This needs to come up a little more. Because I, I do need the separation, that lip on the side of the box. I can't lose that lip but I do want to subdivide down here as well. Let's really build up the black under here. Hmm. Oh shoot, there's a piece of string. It's better. I'm gonna leave it alone for a minute and I'll come back. I'm gonna do some of the texture on the oranges. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, for those oranges, hmm, what should I do? I'm trying to figure out which one. Okay, this one is too light. If I squint, I'm trying to figure out the hierarchy, like which one, this one I think has the brightest highlight and then this one and then this one. So let's bring this one down, okay work out some of the paint in the brush and I'm going to bring down the value of this whole side. This is way too bright, but see, it's fine. Like it's, it's easy for me to make it darker. It would not be easier for me to make it lighter. Just a quick glaze to fill that whole section. Okay. And that's really, it's got to come all the way down. Sheesh. We need a lot more. Actually, let's get out the fan brush for this. So I think the fan brush will really let me smooth this out. All right, so that really does minimize that highlight. And I do need, uh, maybe here it needs a little bit more volume to separate. Yeah, that's better. Oh, and then, oh, this is, okay. There are certain things you don't see them <laughs> until this is a good reason to jump around because I worked on that other section for a while. And now that I'm coming back, I'm seeing things I didn't see before. So that's super helpful. You guys don't stay on one area for too long because then you know what else happens? Certain parts of the painting get finished before other parts and then it's not very cohesive looking. So that's another argument. Oh my God, I'm having so much fun with this. I don't think the painting looks amazing, but I'm having fun. That's what matters. Just have fun, you guys. I had a teacher who used to say that. He used to say, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. And I agree. Okay, let's maybe lift with the rag a little bit. And I'm trying to make the values right now not that smooth because I'm trying to start to hint at some of the texture of the orange like that okay let's see bring that down a little bit i want to give a shout out to gargi thank you so much for the super sticker we greatly appreciate your support 
As some of you guys know, ArtProf is 100% free and we rely entirely on donations. So any amount you guys can give us is such a huge help. For example, I was talking to somebody in the Discord, I think it was today, and they were so nice. They said, oh, I've watched Alex's acrylic tutorial like 10 times. I was like, that's a really big compliment. And are you guys gonna do more like that? Because, oh, Alex is such a good painter. See, I'm jealous of Alex, I really am. I'm like, Alex, how come you're so good? And I said, we really, really want to. We really want Alex to do some paint-alongs. But you know what, you guys, you need a lot of equipment to do this. I know it doesn't seem like you do, but someday I'll show you the setup. You need a mic, you need real lights, not crappy ones, webcam, boom, extension cords, it's expensive. And to, to buy the good stuff, it's expensive. I mean, you can buy crappy stuff, but it's not gonna help you. And I, I, I'm i such a quality control freak. Like I can't let my staff do crappy streams. Like I, I just can't do it. And I explained to this person, I was like, look, we just can't until we have the budget to buy that equipment. And we just don't right now. So hopefully, and we are going to be running a raffle in January. So I'm really hoping when we run that raffle that we'll, we'll get enough to do that. Cause I wanna do the same thing for Lauren. I wanna get her stuff. I, I mean, I wanna get the whole staff that stuff because then we could get Kat to draw. We could have Deep D drawing traditionally. I mean, basically right now, the staff that have iPads, they can do the draw longs, but Lauren and Alex don't have an iPad. And so they can't, do it until we get them the equipment. That's the issue. So I know it looks like it doesn't cost anything to run this, but it's expensive because when you have to pay fees to maintain your email list, we need fees to pay our Flickr page, the costs really add up after a while. And so it, it's, tricky. And that's why the super stickers, every amount counts. If you guys can support us on Patreon, a dollar a month, it, it makes a difference, guys. So thank you so much. Those of you who support us, it, it's huge for that to be the case. Because I've had people say, oh, just set up a paywall. I'm like, I don't want to. For some people, $5 a month is a barrier. They can't do it. And so I just don't want to do that. And yeah, it's probably not a very good business decision. <laughs> I was looking at some of these other YouTubers and I just cannot believe how much money they make from premium content. Like Proco has premium courses that you buy and other things. And that's awesome if you can afford it, but a lot of people can't. And so I was looking at his channel and I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just take a look at what he's doing but a lot of it was like an advertisement for the premium stuff. So it was like, okay, here's this cool thing, but you have to buy the course to get it. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. And some of these courses are expensive. Like I signed my niece up for this comics class that I was very excited about, but it was like $275. I was like, oh my God. I mean, I still bought it. It was awesome. But, and I mean, I can afford it but a lot of people can't. And it's like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> so thank you to Nikolai who says, what's the raffle gonna be? That's exciting. You're just gonna have to wait and find out, won't you? We are gonna have a really long stream though. It's gonna be a marathon stream. It's gonna have the whole staff. It's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> so you guys are gonna wanna miss that. But thank you, Nikolai, for the super chat. And also, and forever, thank you so much for the super sticker. You guys are phenomenal. And forever also says, love you, Professor Lou. I'm proud to be part of your audience before you go completely viral. Awesome. Yeah, and Joe is saying 93, watching right now. I remember when there were only eight people in the chat. Hey, we were psyched. We were like, oh my God, I had a stream the other day. And eight people were watching. We were like, it's so excited. All right, that's a little, uh, 
I'm on the fence about my dots. I feel that my dots are too dotty. I know that's a silly word, but I think some of them are a little longer than I have them. This is the picky, picky stuff. But I'm going to do it here because it's very detailed. And it, it will help, I think. Yeah, that's better. That That's what it is. The dots are too separate. I need to connect them more. But yeah, the raffle is going to be super fun. Because what we oftentimes do is we offer the art that was made in our tutorial. So we'll probably have this one as an option and some of the other ones. So we'll see. I, I have not put together all the details yet, but it's going to be really fun. And it might involve some special talents from the staff that you have never seen before that are not art related. I have one in mind for myself. I'm not going to tell you guys. But if you go to artprof.org and you click on events, you'll you'll find it. It's listed. I mean, we don't have all the details yet. We don't know exactly what time it's going to be, but we'll figure that out. But it'll be like that portfolio critique marathon we did where it's just like, so it's going to be at least five hours or something. And we're going to do some fun things for you guys. So that'll be really cool. Uh, I'm squinting better. Maybe I need to lift with the rag. Do I have any Q-tips? Hang on. Oh, I do. Okay. Let me use the Q-tip. And actually, you know what I'm going to do is put a little bit of safflower oil on the Q-tip. And let's see if I can just, Ooh, that's really fun. Okay, cool. Let's just do a little lifting with the Q-tip because my, my brush was not getting in there like that. Ooh, that's really fun. I'm kind of liking that, guys. Yeah, brushes are not always the way to go. Sometimes you need something a little bit less traditional. In fact, I'm going to paint with this. Let's see. Oh, that's super fun. Yeah, because now I can lift. Oh, this one's a little bit too fuzzy. Let's put a little safflower oil on that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, because I feel that the shadows were looking a little flat. And that is really fun. Oh, my God. I'm so... Hmm. <laughs> Blue Will Spirit says, I'm being such a tease. Okay. There's going to be a Rubik's Cube somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you more than that. It's a Rubik's Cube. Angie says, it seems like Proko lurks you because it seems like he will do a podcast or video on something you've already discussed. Diversity in art was one of them. <laughs> well, I don't know that that's necessarily true, but uh, you know something, you guys, diversity is not just talking. You, you have to take action. And sometimes the action is not that visible. Sometimes people might not even notice it. For example... It's not an accident that our staff is of all different ethnicities. That is not an accident, you guys. So it's one thing to talk about diversity. It's another thing to actually put it into action. And I don't know, maybe some people don't notice that at Art Prof, but I do. And I know the people that hire, that, that get hired, they notice it. And that's really important to me because you know something, when I was in art school, I didn't have role models. All my professors were white males and I love them to death. Some of them are my cherished colleagues, but I, did, I never had an Asian professor, much less a female one. And I've had students say to me at RISD, they say, you were the only female Asian professor I ever had in four years at RISD. And so, yeah. I, I think you, you gotta, 
what is what is the phrase talk you can't just talk the talk you gotta walk walk the talk <laughs> i can't remember which one it is but anyway i mean a lot of people have podcasts now that's not that uncommon i don't think he's lurking me necessarily but i think with the whole black lives matter movement a lot of people are starting to starting to address it but it's it's a bigger issues than that. You, you're not going to get it just by talking about that. And I know all of a sudden people were showing artists with people of color. And I'm like, we've been doing that for a while. That That is not new for our content. So yeah, that's what I have to say <laughs> about diversity. And I know it's complicated how to be an ally and what's appropriate and what's not. And I've heard a lot of people's opinions on it, but there's a lot of people from all over the place and all different experiences that watch us. And I don't think it's an accident that we have a lot of people of color who submit work about being a person of color or like we did a stream can't remember, I think it was about a week ago, and the person's work was about being a transgender woman. And I was like, that's great. I don't think people would submit if they felt that our prof was on a safe space for that type of discussion. So I, I take that as a compliment, which is important. This is really fun. <laughs> this is the super easy part. Oh gosh, it's so cool. All right, I think it's rag time. Yeah, let's do some wiping. Because I just need to take the edge off the edge. I don't want too much going on in here. And actually, the Q-tip's going to help me. I'm so glad I have a bunch of these. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, they're all at the bottom. Okay, cool. Now my rag fell. There we go. Oops, I need some more linseed, not linseed oil, safflower oil. Let's pull that up. Oh, that's really fun. I'm so happy I found you, Q-tip. You are good for something other than cleaning ears. Can I lift? I don't know. I suppose you Q-tips have other purposes. It's just funny because on the Q-tip box, it says, do not put in your ear. And it's like, Everybody knows that's what people use it for. <laughs> Other things too. I mean, maybe makeup and stuff like that, but I never wear makeup. I wear a little foundation, but I don't wear like makeup makeup, like mascara and all that stuff. It's just too much work. It's fine if you do makeup, but I just, I don't have time for it. That's why I need hair. I can just roll out of bed <laughs> and not think about it. It's really a nice thing. <laughs> Oh, I'm loving this Q-tip. It's so fun. Oh my God. I could like do this all day. It's so cool. Oh, that's fun. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to use my fingernail to pull some of this out. Oh, that's super fun. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Let's see. Oh, shoot. Did I say Afro-American? I'm sorry. I meant to say African-American. Sorry about that. That's an honest mistake. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. That was a question that I did before. Margaret says, I noticed the diversity at Art Prof, and I love it. Good. I'm excited about that. Angie says, the comments on the diversity podcast on Proko, that's what we were talking about earlier, with an Asian American female artist, Jennifer Wang, were infuriating on his podcast. Yikes, I don't know that I want to know. C. Cantrell says, I always wondered why at my school that the fine art students were almost all white. The one African American student was chased away. We did have one male black professor. I hate to say this, but when I was at RISD, if I taught three classes a year, which is about I don't know, 50, 60 students, 
I could count on one hand how many non-white students I had. I think I had fewer than five Latino students over many years. I mean, geez. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna say goodbye to this person who is spamming right now. And C. Cantrell says, and, oh wait, shoot, I blocked Angie by accident, shoot. Oh, I'm sorry, you're only gonna be in timeout for five minutes, sorry. I was trying to put somebody in timeout who kept spamming, sorry about that. Sorry about that, Angie, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. And Miku is saying, I see, is it bad that it lightens the color? I don't have any oils right now. It's my first time using oil paint. Just use anything, <laughs> just try it. So much of painting is trial and error. I mean, I hear a lot people in the chat will say things like, not in the chat, in the Discord. They'll say, should I try this? Or will this work? And I'm like, try it. <laughs> like, It does not hurt. And if you don't want to ruin your painting that maybe you've been working on for a really long time, do it on a scrap piece of paper or a scrap canvas where you're not going to mess up something that you worked on for a really long time. And that tends to be a better solution. Because what's the harm? Just try it. Who knows? Sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. And other times... You're like, oh, that looks terrible. Let me never do that again. <laughs> and that's okay too, all right? Okay, time for some squinting. I think this back one, I'm not gonna work on it very much. I'm gonna do a few spots, but I do want this one in the back to be way less clear. I do not want the same level of detail in this one because it's so much further away. It doesn't make sense for it to have the same amount of detail. Maybe a little bit of Q-tip work, I think maybe in here. Crap, I need another Q-tip. I mean, that is a problem with Q-tips. They do really get used up very fast. I use them a lot for printmaking, actually. They're great for printmaking. This, this is something you need to rubber <laughs> shade in some way. More squinting. I don't like this, this is picky. Maybe this one needs to come down. Well, let's do a little rag work. I, I don't like how picky this is. I don't think that this one is supposed to be that picky. I think this one should be more picky, but this one, I'm gonna just drag some of the paint down so I can make the dots a little bit less severe because I do think I overdid it. So I'm just making the value a little smoother. I feel like I want, this is where I like really wish I could add some white paint, but I'm not gonna. More squinting, maybe a little bit more. So yeah, like right now I'm squinting while I paint. The squinting is not just for stepping back, it's for when you're painting as well. And right now that's helping me a lot. More squinting, more squinting. I feel like this one got picky. That's bugging me so much. I'm gonna do another pass here. I think I, I need to lift some of those highlights some more. Is that what it is? A little bit more safflower oil. Hmm. Hmm. This is where it gets really slow, you guys. It's just me looking and picking, but we're getting there. We're really, really close. So, so close. I want to be thought there's this one spot. Give it more contrast. It's not a big difference, but to me, it does something. Hmm. A little bit more here. 
this is this is end game guys <laughs> i feel like i'm talking about the avengers i have not seen those movies i'm sorry i know jordan's upset with me although i was so upset that he told me he never saw doctor strange i'm like jordan that's part of the marvel universe how can you have not seen doctor strange <laughs> Actually, I just finished. Anybody see that HBO show, The Undoing? It's got Hugh, not Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I was like, Hugh Grant, Hugh Jackman, same, right? No, not the same. I mean, Hugh Grant is fine. He's just not Hugh Jackman. But anyway, Hugh Grant and Nicole Kidman are in it. I just finished it. Apparently, some people are very mad about the ending. I'm not going to say anything because it's, it's, yeah, it's a mega spoiler if I do. Hmm. Really time to step back. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut back on the detail. I put too much detail in here. I think I want it a little bit more general. Oh, we still need some more sauce flour oil. Rag is getting really dirty. Be a little bit more just to pull out some of these highlights. I do that a lot actually, you guys, where I, I make something more detailed and then I like buzz it out. That's thinking ahead about what you might want to do. So I oftentimes, if I put in the detail, I sometimes I just end up getting rid of it later. Actually, there's a very bright highlight here, which sort of shows the edge of the shadow. Hmm. Maybe a tiny, there's a little bit of Highlight here. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but I wonder if I could get this highlight. Yeah, that's a little bit better on the stem. It's just a tiny little touch. And maybe just a little bit back here because I don't think this is dark enough. Yeah, just a little bit of a touch back there. Sonnet says, missed the first two streams. This is painting from a photo or a still life. It is from the photo in the lower left-hand corner. It's not because I want to do that, but just because these streams have to be distributed to allow the oil paint to dry in between layers. And if I had a real set of oranges, they would totally rot really soon. And also I know a lot of people enjoy painting from the same subject as me. So yes, in real life, I would just have them in front of me. But what's tricky about this is just the live streaming structure does not work that well. And by the way, if you guys missed it, the link to the reference photo, it's in the YouTube video description. So if you guys want to check that out. And it's part of our Flickr page which is a reference collection, high resolution images for free. And you guys can do whatever you want with that. And Maya says, I've been doing art for most of my life. I'm 17. Watching these live and non-live helps me a lot. Learning more has helped me get into my dream art college. Awesome. We've had a bunch of people who posted in the Discord. They're like, I got into my schools and I'm so excited. I feel like Art Prof was a big part of that. That's awesome, you guys. Lemonade and says, are you talking about diversity in general or fine art? I heard there are a lot of Asian international students in art school in general. Maybe I'm wrong, though. It depends on the school. I just think that schools can do better because I taught at a liberal arts college. It was very visible that diversity was a huge priority for the school. It is not at places like RISD and other schools. And Jay Wolf says, you want that white paint. Those values are so, <laughs> I know it's a pain, but that's okay. Glossia, I am only using safflower oil, nothing else. And actually most of this, I did not use any safflower oil. Most of this was just straight oil paint with nothing else on top of it. 
Iman says, I'm 23, never need to draw in school. I'm trying to learn. Don't understand light shading. What should I start with? Should I continue? Is it appropriate for me to learn at this age? Oh, absolutely. Guys, you don't have to worry about your age. Actually, we have a video. You guys can look it up. It's called, Does Age Matter for Artists? It does not. I mean, there are certain circumstances where it does influence and it annoys me that it does. But as far as can you do it? Go ahead. I mean, Matisse was doing stuff when he was going blind. So it was Degas. Degas switched to sculpture. Matisse changed to collages. There's no limit. So do not worry about that, you guys. It, it does not matter. You want to do it? Do it. I think that's fabulous. All right. I think it's done. I might go in and pick at something later, but this is as far as I'm going to go. So I would love for you guys to join me in the Art Prof Discord. I will be in the Art Alongs channel. The Discord invite link, it's in the video description below. That is the best place to interact with me if you guys want some advice or whatever from the staff or we got fabulous moderators in there, join the Discord. That really is the place because I get messages and stuff in emails and it's just really time consuming to answer individual questions. It's much better when other people can benefit. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can hit <laughs> more than 100K so my daughter will actually respect me. And thank you to our top Patreon supporters. You guys make it possible for us to keep our content 100% free and accessible to everybody who wants it. So thank you, thank you. And thank you to all you guys for hanging out with me. I love hearing your comments and interacting. And thank you so much. I'll see you next time.